Hello everyone and welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host Gavin Hatch. This week we are going to Disneyland Park at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. I've been there before. I took you guys there last year. This year we're going to just go take a nice casual stroll through the park and take a look at some stuff that they have there that we don't have here or stuff that we used to have here at Walt Disney World but we no longer have on the East Coast. So let's take a look at some differences. I know there is a lot of history and a lot of things at Disneyland that are different from Disney World. So I've, of course I can't cover all all of this in a short amount of time that I have. So I know I'll miss some stuff. I'll miss a lot of stuff. But let's just pick out some of the things that I got to experience for myself during my visit to Disneyland just last week. So let's start at the front of the park at the entrance of the Magic Kingdom Park or Disneyland Park. It is very small compared to ours at Walt Disney World. Uh, very intimate, but it's so cute and it's just, it's, it's magical. It's very, it, it's just, you got a different feel throughout the entire park. You, you, If you've been there, you know it's just a totally different feeling compared to the one in Florida. And it all starts right here at the very beginning. And you get to walk underneath the bridge that you see on opening day in 1955 when they broadcasted this on ABC. It was just going through there. It's so it's so overwhelming um, all the history of this park and it's beautiful right here on Main Street in Town Square. And there are some differences right off the bat when you first walk in. Now when you first walk in on the east coast to your right, there's Town Square where you can meet Mickey Mouse and Tinkerbell inside, but on the west coast they have great moments with Mr. Lincoln, and when I was there during this visit last week it was actually closed for refurbishment, but this is something that I, I really recommend seeing because it's very interesting, it's kind of like a smaller version of uh, the Hall of Presidents, but this is the original of course, but it integrates uh, different songs and show elements and scenes, and even some of the script from the American Adventure of Epcot as well as scripts and, and music from the Hall of Presidents here in Florida. So it's like both American Adventure and Hall of Presidents combined into one, and that's great moments with Mr. Lincoln. I wish it was open while I was here, but unfortunately it wasn't, but maybe on my next visit. And when I was taking the pictures up there at the very beginning of the park, I love that I saw Donald and he looks so cute. And I love how most of the characters wear their Halloween costumes all throughout the Halloween season, not just during the Halloween party in the evening. Now next to the great moments with Mr. Lincoln is this building here. Now when you go inside, it looks like just your regular Disney, Art of Disney store. They have lots of great art merchandise in here and it's beautiful. But they have a safe in there and I was wondering why that was. And sure enough, I looked it up, it was a real bank. Uh, this was a Bank of America on opening day in 1955 and it closed in the summer of 1993. So it was here for quite some time. But it was not just a, a place where you can go check your, your balances. This was a real bank. It was a Bank of America branch that was even open on Sundays, which was rare back then. And you could open a checking account here. You can open a savings account while you're in Disneyland Park, which is really unique and you won't see anything like this in theme parks anymore these days. And of course, now Chase is the sponsor when it comes to bank uh, or banks inside Disney Parks. So Bank of America and Disney no longer have that partnership, but this was here again from opening day up until 1993, an actual real live bank. And now it is a store. Now for last year's diamond celebration at the resort, they decorated Sleeping Beauty Castle, uh, of course, in diamonds and all kinds of glitter and made it look really great, but it is still decorated for that event and it's over and the rest of the park, the rest of the entire resort has been stripped of all the overlays of the diamond celebration, but the castle for some reason still has some of that decor on it. I'm not sure if they've decided to keep it or if they're going to just slowly take it off, but it is still there, which I was a little surprised to see. Now from the Halloween season up until the end of the year, they do an overlay for the Nightmare Before Christmas at the Haunted Mansion. This is something that I wish we could do and get away with in Florida, but the reason behind it is that because they have so many international guests and so many visitors that don't come to Disney World a lot that are here every day of the year, um, they don't have time to be able to shut down an e-ticket attraction like this. Such a big and very popular attraction cannot close down for two or three months to have this overlay put on. Um, and, and California, they get away with it just because most of their visitors are locals, are, are people that come out there pretty often and they've experienced the Haunted Mansion plenty of times, so they can live without seeing it for three months. Um, so they get all the cool overlays for the holidays, but Disney World does not just because of the clientele and, and the type of guests that we are getting and the amount of guests that we get every day of the year. It's insane. But I wish this is something that we could get because it is a lot of fun seeing the Nightmare Before Christmas with the Haunted Mansion. 
A lot of land has been cleared and construction has started on the future site of Star Wars land. This picture was taken from Critter Country and that's over by Splash Mountain in their park and in the very back corner of the park that's where all this is happening. It's going to be huge that is for sure but right now there's not really a lot to show you just a lot of dirt that's all. <laughs> Also because of the construction though, Tom Sawyer Island and Fantasmic are no longer open or taking place in the evenings. Uh, you can even see here some construction walls and things going on at the stage where uh, the Fantasmic show takes place. If I had to pick one ride to take from the West Coast and bring to the East Coast, it would have to be Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. I absolutely am obsessed with this ride. I love it. Every time I come to Disneyland Park, I have done it, and it's just, it's so much fun. It's such a simple, dark ride, but it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's because I love the film a lot, and it's really, you see a lot of great characters from the film integrated into this ride, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's simple, and the queue is really immersive and dark, and it's just a good time. So I wish we had this over here at Walt Disney World, that is for sure, but I know it's something we probably will never get, but I, I hope Disneyland keeps it as long as they can, because I will keep coming back just to ride this. Now, at Walt Disney World, entertainment is everywhere. I mean, you have theaters full of shows, you have street performers almost everywhere you walk in all four parks. There, there's a lot of performances to see. You could do a whole day of just watching shows and entertainment instead of riding rides. Now, Disneyland, it's a little different. They have entertainment, of course. They have things to see, but not as much. And one of the biggest things that's different there compared to here in Orlando is that they don't have a stage show in front of the castle. Their castle is smaller and they don't have a stage there itself so you can't really watch any performances going on there except just the Main Street Band. But if you want to see Disney characters and see kind of Broadway style productions that we put on in, in front of our castle, you need to go to the Fantasyland Theater. Now this is a beautiful covered theater that stays cool even in the middle of summer because it's, it's shaded, that's for sure, and they have seats and they're pretty comfortable and a beautiful stage. And this is where you come to watch Mickey and the Magical Map. Now this is where you get your, your dose of... Uh, I mean, it's it's amazing. Disney characters, live vocalists, it's just beautiful sets, it's great. So if you have not seen this on your visit to Disneyland, you have to make sure to check Showtimes and do one of these shows. It's great, and it's a great story, a great array of, of characters. It's in the back of the park, it's in Fantasyland, right by uh, Mickey's Toontown, and it's a small world. And I think this is a great alternative uh, compared to having a huge mob of people standing out in front of the castle because you might want to just take a quick picture but of course a show might be going on things like that this is great because you can choose to come see these shows and you don't have to be standing outside in the sun in front of the castle watching you can sit down in the shade it's great so make sure you come see Mickey in the magical map now just like us they have Thunder Mountain Space Mountain and Splash Mountain they're all a little bit different from ours but they also have the Matterhorn Mountain, so I'm kind of jealous because this is a really fun ride. It is very fast, it's very rough, but it has some great animatronics of the Yeti, and there's actually works compared to the one in Animal Kingdom, but it's it's a good time, it's a classic, and Walt Disney got to ride this himself and was there for opening day, and it's just, again, I love to do anything that he got to do himself. An attraction that is wonderful for the young and the young at heart is the Storybook Land Canal Boats. These are, again, I love attractions in this park that are still here from opening day, and this is another attraction that is. So knowing that Walt has his hand on it and got to actually experience it for himself is really special to me. And I know it's changed a little bit throughout the years, but again, it's a little bit. Um, since 1955, that's a big deal that it really has not gone through any major changes. Uh, they've added different stories to it, such as Aladdin and Frozen, and of course, Ariel uh, and the Little Mermaid. They, they have to keep it current, but it is still uh, pretty much the same experience that you had in 1955. I love the fact that you have a cast member with you the whole time, and that cast member is actually spieling, so it's not pre-recorded. It's, it's really... It takes on a whole different thing when you have a real person there putting their personal touch on it. Now one attraction that opened up with the park in 1955 and also opened up with Walt Disney World in 1971 is Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Now it has since closed at Walt Disney World and when that closed back in the 90s it was a big deal and a lot of people protested that and really tried to fight Disney on that and made sure to try to keep it but they of course 
did not prevail. Now, it's still a Disneyland park. It's still an iconic staple and an attraction that you have to do when you come here. Again, because it was here on opening day. And again, not a whole lot of it has changed. The front facade has, but the, the ride itself is very, very similar to what you experienced in 1955. Right across the way is Pinocchio's Daring Adventure. This is my first time actually experiencing this ride, uh, this visit to Disneyland, and I I love it. It's great. My favorite character is Jiminy Cricket, so getting to see him and Pinocchio, who is adorable, I, it's a great ride. I love dark rides like this. I wish we had more of them in our fantasy land. I know, you know, of course, times have changed and things are advancing, but you gotta you gotta stick with the classics and keep some of those around. And I definitely wish we had something like this still over at Walt Disney World. Now, Walt Disney World, up until the 1990s, they had 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea attraction, and that closed and is now where the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train attraction is located in Fantasyland. Now, Disneyland Park, they still have their lagoon and they still have their submarine fleet, but they, of course, it's changed over the years and has transformed into Finding Nemo themed submarine ride, which is great. I love this ride. Uh, I never got to experience 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea at Walt Disney World. Uh, I never, of course, got to go to the version at Disneyland before it turned into Nemo, but I, I love that they still have the same fleet of submarines and that this is a, it's a beautiful lagoon and it's a great attraction, something very unique that you don't have anywhere else, so I wish that we still had it over at Walt Disney World. Now in Tomorrowland they have a huge round building that's two stories. This used to be their version of Carousel of Progress and then it was America Sings and then it was Innoventions. I might be missing a few other things but those are the three I know it used to be. And now it's Star Wars Launch Bay which is similar to the one that we have at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's huge though. Absolutely huge. Star Wars Path of the Jedi, the film that's shown in Star Wars Launch Bay at Disney's Hollywood Studios, is not in their Launch Bay. It's actually uh, next to Space Mountain over in Tomorrowland, and it is in the theater where they used to have Honey, I Shrunk the Audience and Captain EO. At Space Mountain this time of year, they do a layover called Ghost Galaxy. It's really intense. It's it, They have projections of this creepy, scary-looking ghost that's really loud um, while you're riding the ride, and he pops up all throughout the attraction, and it's really scary but really fun and I love this attraction Space Mountain on the West Coast I feel like is a little bit better than ours at Walt Disney World uh, I love that you can sit next to someone or have someone sitting next to you instead of having them in front of you or behind you it just makes it for a better experience and the ride I feel like is a lot more smooth Oh, and here's something else that they still do that we don't do. It's Fast Pass. It's not Fast Pass Plus at Disneyland Park. There's no magic bands. There's no apps of pre-selecting ride times. They have an app, though, where you can check wait times. But there's no pre-reservations for rides. You just do it the old-fashioned way. You take your park ticket. You put it in the machine. You pull it out. And another ticket pops out and says what time to come back. You know, there's just something about this system that's better. And I enjoy it more than doing the the app and the my magic plus and all that stuff i think this is just kind of a, a good way of doing it talking to the lots of the locals out there uh, they said that they prefer it this way they can't imagine having to use fast pass plus but of course you never know it, it might be popping up in disneyland park before you know it Something you want to get a fast pass for is the Indiana Jones Adventure. This attraction is in Adventureland and I love it. If you've been on Dinosaur at Animal Kingdom Park, it's very similar. The same type of ride vehicles, but of course it's just a totally different theme, story, and track layout. It's I feel like it's more immersive and I love I love the Indiana Jones franchise. So I think that I prefer this one a little bit more compared to Dinosaur, but when it comes to the East Coast, Dinosaur is my favorite Disney attraction for sure. Now, we still have the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, and they, they do as well, but theirs was reimagined into Tarzan's Treehouse uh, years ago, so pretty much, yeah, we still both have that, but of course, theirs has got a little bit of a different story going on, that's for sure, but I love that this is still here. This is something that was here on opening day, and there, you can see pictures and video of Walt walking through this and overlooking the construction progress of the Jungle Cruise right below, and it's, you know, it's, again, part of history. I'm glad it's still here, even though it has been rethemed throughout the years. 
Well, that will do it for this week's photo finds. Again, I know I missed a lot of stuff. I did not cover all these different attractions and things that they have changed throughout the years. There's a lot of history at Disneyland Park, and I, I don't have enough time to do all of it today, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, it gives me another reason to go back for another stay. I, I love it there, and I cannot wait to return. Now, next week, we'll be going to Disney's California Adventure Park, which is right next door, so I cannot wait to take you there. Until next time, though, make sure you subscribe to Attractions Magazine, and of course, get out, have fun, and enjoy those parks.